We also have a company called Modern Needs Survival and then another one called Pain Safari, which provides non-lethal self-defense tools and Modern Needs Survival does prepping gear. So all of our gear or all of the brands that we operate sell products that we hope nobody ever has to use, but are there in the eventuality of some kind of catastrophic situation unfolding and being that lifeline for a person experiencing duress and being able to survive it. So obviously a holster company, we're selling things to carry firearms and magazines and training devices so that if somebody were to be caught in a violent situation, they could remain unscathed and possibly save other people. Prepping gear, pretty obvious. You know, it's like, hey, if the EMP goes off, guess what? You're fine. You've got the backup power. You've got the food. You've got all the things you need to kind of MacGyver your situation and get out alive. And then pain safari with non-lethal um, defense tools. These are flashlights with stun guns. Uh, we're developing a really interesting pepper spray model that would allow women to, primarily women, of course, like, Pepper spray is good for men too, but women seem to like it for the fact that it's not a gun. Yeah. And it gives them access to be able to fend off a violent attack. You know, all of this in the effort to preserve the bonds of friendship and love that they have with others that they can't imagine living without. Right. So it's this idea that America has always been a pull yourself up by the bootstraps and having that pioneer mentality of like, you know, Something has to change and I can't rely on anybody else to do that for me. So I have to take it on myself. So I'm going to buy these products in order to survive. I mean, really, our stuff is about survival. And at the end of the day, it's like, why do you want to survive? Well, you want to make it ha back home to the people that you love. And you also want to give these products to people that you love so they can make it come back to you. And that to me is like, again, this is patriotism, right? You, why do we even fight for this country? Why do we care so much about freedom and liberty? Because it's about these relationships, these bonds that you just can't imagine living without. And so that's the big thing that we're focused on. Like it's kind of our corporate why uh, we make products for the, that purpose. Well, I would, I would argue to say what you guys are quote unquote selling and bringing to the marketplace and bringing to people is, is priceless. And what I mean by that is human uh, uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs, like what, what humans need and what we desire before anything else, which is safety and security, which is peace of mind, right? Which that peace of mind is priceless. So it's not necessarily the idea that you're going to go, you know, spray somebody at a protest with pepper spray. It's more that peace of mind to know that when I go to bed at night or I'm out in public, because I mean, look, probably, probably when there was that shooting in the movie theater, for for Batman, I don't know if you guys remember that. I do. That was, I was, that was in uh, Colorado, wasn't it? Yeah, I was about. Yeah, I was a mile and a half down the road from when it happened, so Great. definitely remember. Yeah, I drove by it afterwards. No idea what had gone. No, on. that was so, that was when I that was when I made the decision right then and there. I was going to start concealed carrying. Th did Did you guys feel the same with that event where? It was now it's scary to go anywhere. Like if you go to a farmer's market, you go to a marathon. You go a uh, running marathon, you go to the movie theater, you go anywhere. That's where I remember that first feeling as an American, as a patriot that was like, oh, well, nowhere is off limits now. Bomb yeah, no, the movie theater one, that was the one where that was when I, the next time I walked into a theater, it dawned on me that the only way, I mean, I was like, the only way I can get out of this theater is through the front. There's. And I think the one that I was in that day only had one exit out. Like, I think there was one hallway you could exit out. I was like this, I feel very, I feel very vulnerable right now. Um, and I did not, I did not like that feeling. I mean, but I'm, you know, but with based on, like, I mean, even after, um, even after what happened, uh, between, uh, Hamas, what Hamas did over in, in Israel, I mean, like right, literally, I think a week after that was when we had uh ACL here in Austin and my daughter was going and like, I was, I was contemplating, you know, should I even let my daughter go? Um, and I, you know, the, big, I, the big outdoor concert. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like Coachella, but down in Austin. Right. Right. I mean, basically the same exact thing that they had going on in Israel when, when Hamas raided that event. I mean, it's just, it was a big outdoor, it's a big outdoor festival. So, you know, now, where, you know, odds are like it, it was not going to happen, but I mean, you know, law enforcement, unfortunately is not what it was in Austin, you know, pre, uh, pre COVID since they've defunded the police here that, you know, the police officers still do the best job that they can. 
Um, but you know, I, I mean, I, I did things that I don't normally do. Like I actually, I, I, you know, I, we, 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 we sided on, uh, on the side of like, you know, we're not going to stop living our life, you know, because we're scared of something that might happen. Like I don't want, we did not, my wife and I did not want our kids to, uh, to experience that, to, you know, like to, to see us make not a living life out of, out of fear. So we didn't want, we didn't want that to be something that left a mark on our kids. Um, what I did do, do though, is I sat down with my, my daughter's boyfriend and we looked over the, we actually looked over the whole map of the concert venue and, you know, went through different, you know, a few different scenarios of like, Hey, if, if, if something gets weird, regardless of whether it's something like this thing we just saw happened or, just something like here's here's like the three different places that you should be able to exit pretty quickly. Like you need to know where these things are, and here's where this you know here's where the first aid areas are. These types of things, and that that wasn't something oh, shit, that Nate, you put them in a headlock and you say, <laughs> "You pussy, get out! I want to make sure you can protect my daughter." <laughs> yeah, well, there's you know there's always that that as well. <laughs> or the Las Vegas shooting that was that's insane. Yeah, yeah that was gnarly. Crazy. But I like that, right? It's like that idea of, um, unfortunately, we're living differently, right? Like we we see so much going on, but in the reality of things, like more more things are going on, right? There's this idea, I think, that uh, when you have access to so much information, it, it can be troublesome because, oh, that's always been happening, right? If anything, the crime is actually lower, but the lack of peace of mind, I think, is clearly real and people are living differently. And I think that's the issue is coming all the way back to 9-11, one of the biggest, if not the biggest terrorist attack, if I'm not mistaken, on America. Yeah. That alone brings back to what I was mentioning earlier with the Patriot Act, right? To where they implemented all of these legal rules uh, that was marketed as acts of terrorism and how to prevent that from happening again or just having certain measures in place, which there was a lot of good. But from my understanding, that also gave those three-letter entities access to pretty much anything. So that is what I find to be interesting. When these big events occur, certain laws that are put into place marketed as or framed as helping us with our safety security but in reality could be potentially taking away our rights. And, uh, and that's the debate, right? Like that's the debate that we'll probably have until the end of time is if you want your safety and security, then there goes your privacy, right? And then we start living indoors. We start living differently. We start living more in a little bit of a state of fear or a state of anxiety versus knowing that your neighbor has your back. And, and, uh, and that's, that's the times that we're in, it seems to be. What do you guys think is the major threat? Like you had mentioned, Adam, the EMP, maybe just explain a little bit more what that is. And do you think that that's like the number one threat in America? Uh, do you think it's not so much dropping a nuclear bomb? Uh, do you think it's not so much World War II and us, you know, going onto somebody else's land and trying to take their weapons of mass destruction? Like you think we're in war now? Do you think that there's major threats in America or is there one that comes to mind? I know I just asked like 17 questions in one, um, but, I, but I am curious on this topic. So an EMP is an electromagnetic pulse. They're generated by either weapons specifically designed for that purpose, and nuclear bombs will produce them, and even the sun. Uh, as we're recording this episode, there's probably a news uh, headline right now about a potential solar flare knocking out communication signals here on, the, in, on Earth. Um, there was one called the Carrington event back in the mid 1860s that occurred on the other side of the sun and projected out so far that had it gone the other way and actually gone towards the earth, it would have pretty much reduced what living civilizations were that were there at that time to the stone age. So if that were to happen now, you know, absolutely could totally destroy everything. And again, set us back to the stone age, but I don't really think that that's um, a major concern. I mean, again, that's an act of God if it comes from the sun. And if it comes from an act of war, then, of course, then we're talking about something else altogether. We're talking about actively engaged in kinetic warfare. So that's another problem, which I don't believe is something that we really need to fear. Um, you know, everybody's kind of looking at Putin right now and telling that telling you that he's unhinged and that he's willing to drop a nuclear bomb. And probably not true. Maybe he is. But like, again, I don't think that he wants to decimate the entire entirety of the human population. 
there are despots like that who are batshit crazy who might, but not my chief worry. I think when you are looking at the United States and what we really need to be worried about, it has everything to do with culture. Um, you know, of course, like we have influences from communist China, which uh, is something that Yuri Brezmanov talked about back in the 80s. It's a popular video on YouTube that you could go watch right now talking about how the communists were able to or would infiltrate the United States through the system of the uh, education system and leverage their ideology as a, you know, basically as a virus to collapse the American economy, collapse the American culture. And I think that's what you're seeing playing out right now. I don't think that communism is the end goal, to be completely honest. I think the end goal is something that is divorced from politics and has more to do with a a singular entity, which we will call Satan, because that's a pretty easy paradigm for everybody to understand. It, you know, if you read scripture, like his whole idea is to upend the kingdom of God. And so we see that manifesting itself in so many different ways right now. So uh, Nate had already mentioned what Italy's doing for families, saying we need to get back to the family, which is something that you can see right now is presently being done. And we're doing the opposite. So the family is an anathema to success. Like, it's so funny that kicker, I can't remember his name from the Kansas City Chiefs, just spoke like two days ago and encouraged the people in the audience at a Catholic university to continue on with their stewardship of their family. So be at home, cook a meal, right? Take care of your kids. Like there is no higher calling. And the, I mean, I don't want to use the left in terms of like political ideologies, but there you is told women left. to get back in the kitchen and get back in the bedroom. And that's it. Don't do anything Pretty else. much. Yeah. 